We we. I'm okay. rolling. I'm rolling. Are you? Are you really? Everything I'm rolling. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get the show on the road. Yeah. All right, welcome to the show, everybody. Uh, I'm Dean. I'm Ricky Downs. Yes, he is. And we're here to talk about stuff. Yes, we are. Good to have you back on the show, man. Thank you, uh, Dean. It's good to be back. Back in the Yeah, back it's, in been, the it's been a long summer without you. Oh, thank you. It has yes. been a long summer. A lot of cra- <laughs> It's funny, because a lot of the stuff... We talk, uh, we were talking all about summer blockbusters, and now the, uh, the blockbusters are... And then uh, they happened. Then they happened, and uh, for the most part, they were pretty disappointing. Yeah. No. Yeah. Well, I guess if people like Jurassic World. I don't know if people like Jurassic World enough that they decided to bring it back to theaters, or they're like, hey, hey guys, hey guys, Jurassic World came out. You remember that? It yeah. was so good. Let's just show it again. Yeah. Let's no. just bring it out there again. Jurassic World was, like, if I'm thinking of just a movie that was good, but nothing more, that, that's like, that's my now go-to movie, because... It, yeah, it's, because it's like, it's not, oh, it's not life-changing or anything, it's just, oh, it's dinosaurs. Yeah, but that ending was amazing, I will say. I was on the edge of my seat with the, uh, the end, that, that fight scene, that was great. Yeah, well, that, uh, that was great. That was Honestly, great. Honestly, I love it. But yeah. what, what, what could be better than dinosaurs you lo- know and love fighting a bio-dinosaur? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it's like, it's like fighting the Terminator or something, like, come on, it's... Well, when they were jumping on, when, when the raptor was jump like, kind of, like, riding the Rex like a cowboy, <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah. I'd never seen anything like that. It was awesome. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, it, like, it really does highlight how dumb dinosaur arms are. Because, like, yes, <laughs> yeah, they're just, yeah. they're basically just going to bite each other in the neck. Yeah, very like, true. Like, there's, there's, there's nothing else you, but it's like, how often they're going to bite each other in the neck. <laughs> exactly. That's what you're waiting for. Yeah, precisely. Because you're not watching, you're not watching the Indy 500 because like, oh man, they're gonna turn from the 400th time. It's like, no, they're gonna, they're probably gonna crash. No, That'd be awesome. Robin Williams had a great joke about that. He said, uh, "I watch NASCAR for all the racing, yeah, and I watch porn for the acting." <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, yeah I, I was, I was surprised that like after that, I'm like, okay, that was a good movie. I'm, I'm surprised. I'm happy yeah. that happened. Yeah, that was good. And uh, then I found out people were calling it sexist. I'm like. Oh. Well, I agree. Really? I, I will agree with some of their points. I thought the kid who kept, like, the fact that, like, they had that kid, the older boy, just checking out every girl at the park. I was like, yeah. really? And, and yeah, that scene, I liked the main character, though, the, the redhead. I thought she was alright. I didn't really see yeah, that. Yeah, no. No, because she, I, I understand, I understand the point that they were trying to make, like, oh, she was a successful career woman, and then the movie basically said, you have to be a mom figure. Like, well, oh, well, the thing right. is, my my response to that though is that you got watch any like family film, workaholic mom dad is not uncommon, you know. Yeah, no, exactly. Like and like the the movie movie ten generally makes you say, all right, just focus on family at least for once. Yeah, you know, like I I can like you know jingle all the way. Hook dad has to become even like Rugrats and um Rugrats with Charlotte. There was an episode. Hey Arnold, Miriam became like uh took over bob's beeper she had to go back to the family it's uh, true it's true you know it's uh i remember rocket powers uh the squid's dad like was a businessman didn't make time it's like a really mm-hmm. common trope it's more just like kind of cliche than i think offensive but i will say the chick the chick who got uh like mauled by the pterodactyls in the water that was like a little that was a bit much <laughs> that I could, was i can <laughs> understand like people saying she that was just following orders she didn't have to die <laughs> yeah and not only that but had the pterodactyl maybe, like, sw- swooped her up, and uh, she, like, kicked it, and then, like, she, like, said, I'm free! And then, like, the Mosasaurus just gobbled her up. That yeah. would have been fine. That actually would have been really funny. But the <laughs> fact that you see her, like, get ripped to shreds, like, by these pterodactyls, like, okay, somebody, like, has a Especially prop. since those piece-of-shit kids basically made her life a living hell by running away. Yeah, and, <laughs> it, it, yeah, so that one, I was like, yeah, I, I, I totally get it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but Inside Out was very good, I will say. Oh, I loved Inside Out. Inside Out was very good. I thought... <laughs> I actually really enjoyed the Minions. <laughs> it was just a cathartic experience for me. I don't know. I, 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 like, knew what to expect from the Minions, so I'm like, you know what? I'm not gonna see it. 
Like, I already know. <laughs> well, it really was kind of funny because it was one of the first times that I saw an animated movie that had absolutely no effort to have a plot or development, just jokes for an hour and a half. And I don't I'm, know how I don't know how far I could get through that. I like okay, I need a little bit of story. <laughs> for me, it was it, for me. I I I kind of like wow. I really appreciate this because for me it was like wow. This movie's got a go. Get they them. heard the call from the masses, and they're like, okay, well, all right. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, you really you, want that? You, you wanna, want minions you wanna, for an hour and a half? Here's minions for an hour. And you want to flood your Facebook with that? Okay, well, here you go. Oh God, yeah. When when people who don't use the minions ironically on their Facebook, <laughs> like when they have the act like them with like, God is watching you. <laughs> Yeah, those are so. Or just like a minion with a coffee cup saying, "I hate Mondays." Like, come on, Garfield was doing that shit way before you guys were <laughs> Ex- invented. Exactly. So, do we want to talk about these crazy uh, stories now? Yeah. All right. Let's. Uh, well, since since you are the guest, the perpetual guest, uh, by all means, choose your favorite one. All right. Well, I have to first because before it leaves my head, Burger King's Black Halloween Burger is turning people's poop green and they're freaking out. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Oh. I. First of all, when they introdu- introduced this uh, burger last year, my mind immediately immediately went to that SpongeBob episode. Wait, uh, last year? Was it or was it like last year? Did they do this last year? Yeah, it came out the first time they did it was last year. Oh, all right. And um, my mind immediately went to that SpongeBob episode, Pretty Patties. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not tainted meat. It's painted meat. Tainted meat. meat. <laughs> um. Ooh, wow. Thank you. <laughs> um. And now, there's like another joke, another reference I can make out of that is uh, the people getting mad about the tainted meat. Look, yeah, we all got on the meat killed! <laughs> <laughs> green poop. Green poop. But it's like, it's comical green. It's not like, oh, I got sick. It's like, oh, well, this is green. <laughs> what? Did you eat Kermit the Frog? <laughs> yeah. Although I am, I am thankful that the article didn't actually yeah, show, didn't show the, the actual thing. Yeah, I mean, well, unfortunately, there's some toilet paper. <laughs> there's some toilet. That's the closest you're gonna get. Yeah, but now I'm kind of. It's uh, icky girl. <laughs> it's one of those things. Like I want to. You know what? Just for the sake of doing it, I want to try it just to like <laughs> confirm the rumors for myself. <laughs> it, it's it's terrible. It's terrible. But it's like, oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> we want a refund back. <laughs> All 623 of us. <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> the tongue, yeah. Yeah, the tongue. Uh, and yet, uh, I remember, I could have sworn I talked about uh, this on the show before. Uh, Japan actually did uh, food coloring with their Burger Kings, like, oh, really? earlier. And, uh, yeah. multi, like, actually, like the Pretty Patties, where they were, like, rainbow yeah, colored? Uh, they did a black bonnet and black cheese, and they colored it with squid ink. Um, oh then, my god, really? Yeah, they did. They did. And it's like, oh, oh, why would you really want something that's just like a dark, amorphous mass? <laughs> Where did they get the squid? I mean, I guess from a squid, but aren't... <laughs> <laughs> Where did they get the squid ink? They dug for it. <laughs> An octopus. No, they got this... Um, I understand where they got the squid ink from, but... Uh, that is... Are there enough squids to do that? I I guess. I guess. <laughs> I guess so. I mean, I never would assume there were just so many squids out there. I mean, like, well, leave it, leave it to Japan to just say, well, let, let's just go hunting for squids now. Let's just <laughs> let's give the uh, whales a break. Let's go for squids. Our burgers need to be black now. The Burger King industry, Burger King opened up a whole industry of squidding. <laughs> but um. No, no, but actually, you brought it up. What else did they have besides the black uh, burger? Uh, they did red, uh, and okay. they, I think they did like a, they did like a pepper extracts. Put that with the bun. Okay, that makes a so, bit more sense. Well, no, I remember. I don't. Did, okay, around Fourth of July. Speaking of burgers, did you see the uh, not Arby's Carl Junior's commercial? Yes, yes, the All for American, the All American, which is a heart attack. Uh, five heart attacks. You have a hot dog, a, yep. a cheeseburger, and like potato chips. Potato chips. Yes. <laughs> that is not. <laughs> Who could eat that? I mean, I don't. Why even would eat... you want to eat that? That's 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 really too much stuff. Yeah, that is honestly too much. Stuff. Like if you if you wanted to do hot dog with the hamburger, okay. You want to put chips on the hamburger, okay. Don't do all of that. <laughs> all three. You're messing with fire, man. <laughs> 
And trust me, you don't like it when it comes out. Yeah, calm the fuck down, Icarus. <laughs> You're flying a little too close to the sun. Exactly. And <laughs> the, um, what is it? Did they, uh, yeah, well, that makes, so they did a red and black burger. Um, they have, I haven't heard them do much else, but I'm pretty sure after this, they're probably seeing this like a challenge and saying, oh, you want poop green? <laughs> we can do that. <laughs> I wonder if they make a green burger, you go poop black. <laughs> Oh wow, <laughs> that's a, that, that let that sink in for a minute. Uh, <laughs> but but yeah. I, I I don't know I don't know if they actually like planned for that. Like what what did you expect putting steak sauce in a bun, and then I guess serving that to people? I I don't know steak sauce in bun equals green poop. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, it's, there's it, a couple it, variables missing here. Montecito is up to something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe or maybe maybe. These people who are complaining about the green poop already had this problem, and they already decided, you know what? This is weird. Let's let me just talk about my issues <laughs> masquerading under the burger. They all like become. They're all like part of this uh, institute in which they uh, yeah, got together because of this problem, and we gotta find a scapegoat. Uh, what's in the news? Oh, <laughs> yeah, it it was the black burger, obviously. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's weird. People are never gonna suspect us. <laughs> As they like eat. Um. Oh well, what could be funny? Um, ah, oh, chips. I ran out of green references with Kermit. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, you fired that cannon a little too soon, man. All right, we got the we got the, gazoo, the great gazoo of the Flintstones. <laughs> that guy, you know, he invented. You know, you know, like when car shows clearly are running out of ideas. Um, hit me with an example. Like, uh, okay, so, alright, when a show is running out of ideas and they're running out of steam, they kind of invent this new character. Uh, oh, I think, yeah. You know, like, the the first one to come to mind is Scrappy-Doo. Yeah. And and it's always, like, somebody to, like, kind of, uh, you know, like, who's hip and happening to get it with the the new crowd, you know, man? Oh, um, God. Like, you know, like, that episode of Simpsons with Poochie, they kind of, like, they kind of, like, Hit the, uh, they kind of, you know, They hit the nail on the head there. Yeah, they with, did. with Poochie. They did. But, you know, Scrap, I'm thinking of Scrappy-Doo. I think I'm, I remember reading somewhere that Scrappy-Doo actually saved the series, but only because people really hated Scrappy-Doo. <laughs> yeah, but no, the Great Kazoo, I think, is the prototype for that. Because he was not around for the Flintstones the entire time, and I know he's not hip and happening, but, I mean, it's an alien in a Stone Age, so. That is very true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that didn't, what? Why would why would they think that made sense? Well, yeah, I don't know. Well, nowadays, I nowadays I've noticed whenever they do that, it's not so much like a hip and happening guy. It's they, it's more like they have a stupid, a really stupid character like Cheese from Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends is one. Oh that, yeah. Uh, yeah, I like cereal, and that was cute for yeah, like, chocolate minute. milk. Uh, yeah, chocolate milk. Uh, Dill from Rugrats is another one. They did that. They did that fairy baby thing with fairly odd parents. Yeah, Although I, re I stopped watching that a long time ago. So yeah, the the only one who I actually give a pass to because I do think he was legitimately funny was from Billy and Mandy Fred Fred Burger. Oh yeah, I actually thought he was. Uh... Oh, I loved I loved Fred Fred Burger. Yeah, <sighs> and, you know what he was, and the thing was that I think he was only like one or two episodes. He was one. He was one episode, and then I think they just kept bringing him back because they were like, okay, everyone's quoting him, everyone loves him. Let's just give him more of that. And there was like, it was originally. Uh, I, I'm actually surprised at how well I remember this. It was, he a was trial. like he was a juror. He was a juror in the trial, and then it was like after that uh, he won. Yeah, he won the contest with the Grim Reaper. With the frozen yogurt. With the frozen yogurt. <laughs> what do you want to do with the Grim Reaper? I'd like to get some frozen yogurt. Yes, yes. <laughs> you killed my frozen yogurt. Frozen burger. Fred, come out of the freezer. <laughs> yeah, no. That... And then I think he was in like that feature film that they did. Yeah, I think that was it though for him. Yeah. But no, the, like I, the the Great Kazoo kind of invented that. Scrappy Doo, I think, is the worst one because he's just so he. Oh, he was not not only that, but like a lot of '80s shows always had that one really annoying, like kind of comic relief. I don't really watch many '80s shows. Well, but when like, you when you say '80s shows, I think I think you're basically centralizing that to Hanna Barbera. Yeah, yeah, but it's not just Hanna Barbera because He Man had Orko, who was. Ugh, I'm Orko. Uh, you had S Snarf from the Thundercats, but he was uh, but he was there from the beginning, wasn't he? Yeah, they were, but I think that's the thing. Like they always had like the, the shows in the eighties. They always had, had a comic relief. Like I tried watching Thundercats, like an episode of it, 
And I don't know if I would have gotten through without uh, Schnarf Schnarf. Schnarf Schnarf. Schnarf poor old Schnarf Schnarf. Schnarf. That's true, I guess. But um, with with the, the thing is, like, about those 80s shows, you watch them. I didn't really wa- We're 90s babies, so we didn't really watch them to begin with. But when you yeah. find them, it's kind of like, ah, oh, the classics. Really? These are the classics? <laughs> yeah, they have, they have, like, that very older feel. You know what I mean? Yeah, and they're not really that well animated, to be honest. Although I did, I did have a soft spot for wacky races. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. But like, I'm not, I'm not. Ta- I'm talking less about Hanna Barbera and more about like the ones that were clear like toy makers, like Transformers. Oh yeah. Um, you, okay. Yeah, I can see that. Maybe not TMNT because they're pretty. Uh, they're pretty solid. But uh, trans- are they though? Mm, yeah. <laughs> are they? Like, let's let's really think back. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on. The- you got Donatello who does machines. Uh... And did you, did you hear about what they did with Donatello? No, what happened? Like, it, this is canon. They killed him off. What? They killed off Donatello. They killed... Not Donatello, he did machines. <laughs> <That's> all... <laughs> Who's going to do machines now? <laughs> Who's going to have the stick for a weapon? <laughs> exactly. And I'm, when, I, when I heard about that, my first reaction was, well, at least it wasn't a character that people liked. Yeah, like Michelangelo, the party dude. <laughs> if they killed the party dude, no one would want to read it anymore. Or, it's like, why would you do that? Or Rath, who's a hothead. Give me a break. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that's the thing. We had, we had that. We did have a team and T show that of that of our generation. Do you remember that one? That was like kind of more like they're buff and they're kind of like. Yeah. I remember, my brother watched that. I didn't really watch it. Uh, I my my older brother had an action figure of them, and I'm like, these don't look like the Ninja Turtles. That they look like. They look like Power Rangers or roided out turtles. They look, yeah. yeah. Um, they look sharp. I don't know if I want to like actually play with something like that. Holy what crap. the shell are those things? I remember that. <laughs> that was the one thing I remember from that show. Um, oh wow, that was an actual like thing from the. Oh wow. Yeah. Oof. All right. So uh, let's move on to the next story. We now have <laughs> the Bangladesh farmer who is uh, who is named the... National Rat Killing Champion. <laughs> But I, I really want to just, like, talk about some of the quotes he has, because this is not just something that happened. This is, a, this is, a, this is like, a, his life. It sounds like he's doing a public service when he talks about it. I've been killing rats. I've been killing rats since 1996. I love killing them. They are the enemy of the country and people. They devour grains, ground nuts, and spread diseases. Yeah, okay, calm down, Adolf. <laughs> exactly. He, uh... He, he, he um... He, he reminds me of, uh, he's like, kind of like, you know, like, just like that stereotypical, like, South Park red, they took her germs! But this, his job is just killing rats. <laughs> so, wait, what, did, what does he do, what does he do just in general? Well, I think he just... He's a farmer. Yeah, okay, so he's a farmer, so, farmer by day, rat killer by day and night. <laughs> We've heard... <laughs> and also night. Yeah, wait, what We'll never forget him, the rat killer. <laughs> I'm sorry, folks. There's other places that... Wherever there's a rat that needs a killing, I'll be there. <laughs> wherever there's a mouse who needs to die, I'll be there. <laughs> the government official, Borhan Udin, said the farmer was obsessed with killing rats. And I, I, that's not that's not a far... That's not a far stretch, because he killed uh, more than 160,000 rodents in the past 12 months. <laughs> um, did like a rat kill his mom or something? <laughs> rat man. I picture this guy kind of like you know he has like kind of a torture and he's like kind of talking to the rats like you think that I spread mercy for you after what your kind did to her. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! But I, I and you know what I think the I think the real tragedy about this is that he won an award for it, which I guess is a lot for his town or village it's uh 20,000 Bangladeshi taka and that is roughly $250 american oh my. so oh my. Wow. yeah i <laughs> that's a... it wasn't worth it sir wasn't <laughs> worth it yes I, I have a feeling like he he's like a villain and like <laughs> you know like there's always these animated movies that have mice in it as the main like there's just there always will be and they'll never go away yeah. There's clearly like, going to be an animated feature with him as the villain. But he turns around at the end. You just got to believe in yourself. We're not different. So what do you think? Like uh, a Bangladeshi tale? 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ratatouille. But, uh... There are no adults in America. <laughs> <laughs> they go to... Ba- the Ameri- in this case, the Russians leave, um, to go to Bangladesh. For some reason. <laughs> For some reason. Invent a reason. Maybe there's a family reunion. <laughs> family reunion in Bangladesh. They're in my yard. We need to escape the tyranny of Russia. Let's go to Bangladesh. Wait, what? Why Bangladesh? <laughs> Let's just go to America like everyone... No, Bangladesh! <laughs> I've always wanted to see the country. You gotta believe in yourself. You see? We... Uh, Abdul, what, what's that on your... What's that on your plate? It's cheese. We eat cheese, too. Yeah, well, I... Well, I eat it with my, my fork and knife. Well, we eat it with our hands. Is that really that different? <laughs> I, I never saw it that way. I don't know why he's southern. It sounds like from the article, like, they're, they're like... There's no way to be unbiased about this. Yeah, like, rats eat things and kind of, like, ruin things for humans. But I, I, I you kind of almost feel for the rats in this one. Uh, well, it, it they, says mention, it, they mention he's, the fellow villagers called him mad. That he's like a Pied Piper of Hamel, but instead of leaving the rats, he like leads them. He, yeah, he's on the flute, but it, like it's all Looney Tunes business. It's like he, they, he's like, duh, 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 duh. you see the rats dancing behind him, and he just leads them off a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he, apparently, it was said like during the ceremony, he told the dignitaries that nothing gives him more pleasure than killing grain-eating rodents. So does does that sound like a well-adjusted individual to you? Uh, no, it does not. No, it does not. <laughs> I'm sure he did like a very good public service, and he has deserved the 250 American. Maybe he can, you know, buy buy himself a nice nice meal or two at Planet Hollywood, <laughs> the Hard Rock Cafe in Bangladesh. Exactly. All right, what else we got? Chinese China's terrifying glass bridge just cracked. All right, I have a really bad. Uh, uh, Let's so, hear it. Let's okay. hear it. Was there an opera scene nearby? <laughs> <laughs> Do you Did the s- fat lady sing? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, oh, oh no! Oh god! First it of says all, right. How do you make the world's longest glass? First off, let's just talk about the world's longest glass bridge. <laughs> what what compelled people to think that was a good idea? Uh, I don't know because it seems like uh, it's a disaster waiting to uh, happen. <laughs> Cause is it is it like one piece or is it like just done in section? If it's done in like one piece, like you get like one really dedicated glass blower. That, yeah. that just... <laughs> Can I stop now? No. <laughs> <laughs> that I did. Oh. Yeah, I didn't realize that, but I assume it's probably multiple pieces. But I mean. If we're able to use glass to keep out sharks in SeaWorld, you know, like that glass... You ever been to SeaWorld? I have. You know that... You know, okay, in the shark exhibit, they have that glass tube. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's, like... I, at first, I'm, like, really glass bridge, but if it's pex- plexiglass, it could be kind of cool from a novelty standpoint, because you'll be... You're looking down at the ocean. I assume it can't... I don't, I don't think it could fit a car. Can it? Might. Oh, um, might. Might. Wow, but if it's a car, that's that is scary then, because I don't know if I would. Uh, that's that's uh, that, you're playing with the big boys. <laughs> but it, what what caused it to crack was they dropped a stainless steel mug on it. I guess to prove that they were safe. <laughs> oh, that's and hilarious! This... It caused the first of the three layers to crack. A stainless steel cup, so like, like just a mug essentially. I, I guess. I oh. guess just yeah, I... just. <laughs> like, you have, like, Daddy, I'm sk- 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 scared to cross. Oh, come on, Billy. This glass is pe- the strongest glass in all of China. It's tempered glass. And they drop their little mug on it just to prove it. Just like... <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm gonna have like, I'm gonna... <laughs> it's like Final Destination happening there. <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> uh, no, they dropped, uh, a cl- they dropped a Starbucks... Uh, they dropped a Starbucks <laughs> latte on it. We're fine. <laughs> <gasps> oh wow! Look at that Starbucks being uh, great for the environment as always. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it, I, the the article is short in itself, and they were they already like said, oh, it was actually the glass walkway leading to the bridge, which still that doesn't oh. like it's the bridge being made of glass. That would be like horrifying if that happened. But I mean, the walkway itself is just like oh. 
wow, that is still kind of bad, because that's still suspended over something. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, uh, I wish it was the gla- I wish it was the bridge itself. I, I was still like, why would you make a glass? <laughs> I don't know. Mm. All right, so now we have a, a New Jersey priest arrested over claims he pointed a musket at an eight-year-old boy because of a football rivalry. Not the first time. <laughs> let's I'm... let's let's break this apart piece by piece. All right, well, well, let's, let's first get like just the one liner out of the way. Not the first time a priest pointed something pointing at a boy. Wow. <laughs> Okay, so let's 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 break this down in sections. Okay, so priests arrested over claims. Okay, well, well let's let's <laughs> let's draw not, our own conclusions from that's that. That's not news. He pointed a musket. Hold <laughs> on. <laughs> Take <Take now. laughs> now. Not not an assault rifle, which is controversial. Not a not a handgun, which I guess more people have than you expect. A not a, not a shotgun because this is in New Jersey and not say Alabama. <laughs> A musket, something that I don't think anyone has used since the 1700s. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, at an eight-year-old boy. Whoa! Have you, have you ever gotten so pissed that you pointed a musket at an eight-year-old? Or anyone for that matter. Because <laughs> that thing is lodged away in the shed somewhere, so you have to you have to go back home, rifle through the shed, then come back, hope he's still there, and then point it at him. Because I think, well, hold on, it, have, have you ever seen a kid crying at, like, a supermarket or Toys R Us or something? And yeah. then you immediately see the father pointing their musket saying, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Quiet, you, or you're gonna get a, you're gonna get two milligrams of lead. It may not hit you because it's a musket and, you know. Because of a football rivalry, what kind of opinions do <laughs> eight-year-olds have about <laughs> sports in general? And I say he's the worst quarterback this side of the Mississippi. Well, I, I, I think I, I, I want to give Tim Tebow a chance again. You shut your damn <laughs> mouth, boy. You want Tim o- Tebow a chance? How about you get lit a chance? Dance, boy. <laughs> Dance like Tebow. <laughs> I could just imagine him like getting, getting like the he's pouring the black powder in there. He's getting like the the little musket ball and the stick to push it in there. It's just kind of like, yeah, keep talking about the giants. Well, that, Go ahead. He's Go playing, ahead. Well, you know he's a priest, so he's doing the before he puts the musket. He kind of like does that thing where they they flick the water on you, but with the musket. This is gonna be a holy execution. <laughs> oh my god! <sighs> Catholic humor. <laughs> Let's see, so let's see here. Let's let's dive into this a little bit. I mean, this is like. Uh, the, I mean, well, I like how like the head title. You kind of go for the five stages of grief with this thing. A giant mistake. Okay, oh, that's what is that? Uh, depression. No, de- I first thing. It, wait, what? Denial. That's it. Denial. Okay. All right. All right. Priest arrested. Priest arrested. Okay, that would get you angry. Oh, I'm getting with this. Yeah, exactly. And then uh, he points a musket, bargaining. Uh, bargaining for his life. I guess he's an eight-year-old boy. That's depression. All right, that's, that's uh, that would be upsetting if he actually did. And then acceptance because of a football. Just ah. like, oh, he's a foot. He's a he's a Giants fan. It's okay. Yeah, exactly. It's fine. <laughs> ah, it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, I- but the, apparently the boy was uh, uh, cheering for the Dallas Cowboys. So. <laughs> Cowboy fans, please just take note. Don't don't be too proud about it around Giants fans. Precisely, Father Kevin. I like his picture. How he's kind of um, <laughs> he's yep. very grim about it. He's just kind of like, yeah, I did it. <laughs> yeah. So what? I, uh, the Lord was on my side. <laughs> oh my God! What, what, why? Why on earth would anyone think that was a good idea? <laughs> <laughs> was it in? Was it during Mass? Oh, that'd be hysterical if it's during the homily, and you know, like priests will come, will try like before they get into it, they'll try to relate a little bit and make a few like a few jo- yeah, yeah. A jokes here and there, like. And I guess it's the Giants, so uh, who saw the Giants game? I guess the, that's where you get where you don't pray, am I right? <laughs> yeah, go like from the way back here, like go, go cow- Cowboys. What was that? <laughs> like he takes it from the uh, he takes it from the cross that's on top of the ceiling. Like, <laughs> so actually, you're not too far off. Apparently, uh, let's see. Uh, Carter allegedly approached the boys. He and his family arrived for mass services hours before the Giants and Cowboys faced off in their first game of the season, and asked to see him in one of the rectory rooms. 
We need to confirm. So that, that, forgetting everything else that you've heard about this, this already sounds like it's not going to turn out well <laughs> for anyone involved. <laughs> hey, why don't you come with me alone? I don't know. <laughs> what on earth? What? Several witnesses watched in horror as the priest stood against the wall and allegedly pointed the Civil War era musket at his head. And he literally, uh, this is the uh, witness is saying, he just pointed it at the boy and said, I'm going to shoot you. What? <laughs> what on earth? Maybe it was like a, like, he was gonna go like old school Catholic, it was like a lesson in discipline. And like, but like, get a friggin' ruler! <laughs> yeah. What's wrong with that? <laughs> I just, I, I can't, oh my god. <laughs> well, it's... But a musket? <laughs> but a, like a musket, like, I'm sure it would have been a lot, I'm sure one of the people that may have been looking on just kind of like, he's not really going to fire a fucking musket at the kid, the thing will crumble before he pulls the trigger! <laughs> like, like, hard, like, like a Looney Tunes. <laughs> He just it's just like the bang flag that comes out of it. <laughs> that's what you get. Now that's more for that's for room for the cowboys. Now sit down. <laughs> That'll be five Hail Marys and uh, two Our Fathers. <laughs> and you are forgiven. But I don't know. There's just no point in that story that makes like I, 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 I no one. I, there's no report here saying like he was laughing and smiling. Just got like <laughs> you go for the you go for the cowboys. You go get this to the temple, boy. <laughs> like no, it's just I'm going to shoot you. <laughs> That's like did 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 he even like say anything before that? Like so I heard you're a Cowboys fan, or the Giants better win, otherwise I'll find you. <laughs> I think it's better without context. He just bring like I like to talk to him alone. Oh dear, the flag should be going off in everyone's head at that point. Oh dear God. Oh dear God. Points him, takes him into a room. The kid's like, "What is going to happen?" Oh, okay, just relax. <laughs> he just puts out a musket. <laughs> Look, is this about the fact that I'm not an altar boy anymore? I'm sorry. No, you're like the cowboys. <laughs> this is something bigger than both of us. You mean God? No, <laughs> fantasy football. <laughs> Well, he had a fantasy account. He's playing with witchcrafts. That's why he had to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I just... Root for the Dallas Cowboys just... rather than the New York Dallas. Why? What? What? How does this make sense to anyone involved? Which makes sense. Well, you know, like, I don't know. Like, it... First of all, isn't like rooting for the Giants kind of a sin because of Goliath? And I would assume that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, true. Joke's on him. <laughs> I mean, it's not like you know. There's like a what? Give me, give me, give me a very obscure. It's not like there's a. I can't even think of it. That's how obscure a town would be for that. Uh, the Montpia Antichrist. <laughs> well, <laughs> the Augusta Sinners, or, or the Saints, <laughs> or or just the Saints. Yeah, why wouldn't every priest just be rooting for the Saints? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they lo apparently they lost, so I guess it's like the punishment for him. I guess so. <laughs> sort of like just God was watching it, and I just kind of like, look, a, a kid was about to be killed. Yeah. Because, if anything, why wouldn't that, like, work in his favor? Like, look, there are priests out there, there are men of that will follow my word, that want the Giants to win. The one will even go so far as to kill a small child. Let, let's just give it to them. No, that didn't happen. <laughs> So maybe that's karma instead of God, uh, divine intervention. Pro probably. Okay, sure. okay, let's let's move on to political stuff. All right, all right. So this one, I'm really excited about. Uh, a senator from Florida. Of course, it's Florida. No, oh yeah, of course, it has to be Florida. A libertarian state senator candidate admits that he not only sacrificed a goat, but <laughs> drank it. Not only so what. <laughs> Not only <laughs> sacrifice. It's just gonna, well, that's not the worst of it. Hold on. <laughs> he drank its blood. Okay. And he sacrificed oh. it. I, I think. I believe it was the god of libertarianism. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, okay, so. Let, let, let's, let's dive into this a little bit. Uh, two well, years ago. What? Huh? Yeah. Well, two years ago, he apparently walked from central Florida to the Mojave. Mojave Desert, so a real life Forrest Gump, but uh, w without any of the charm. And uh... <laughs> spent a week fasting and praying. Well, hold on, his name is Augustus Sol Invictus, 
And I got it. That that sounds like a villain. <laughs> yeah, if you see that on your ballot, that sounds ticket. like you got like a cultist robe going on. <laughs> yes. And uh, one of the pictures, I'm, I'm pulling up his picture on Google Images, and the first one I saw, like it's kind of like a far away shot, but he looks kind of like Victor Crumb. <laughs> Crumb. <laughs> But social social programs, no social programs. But we must have gay rights. Oh that's, my God. that's the libertarian stance in the voice of uh, Victor Crumb. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, at times, think he wouldn't survive in the pagan ritual to give thanks when he returned home. He killed a goat and drank its blood. <laughs> I, th- so it's a pagan. Th- what? Well, wait. He's a pagan. Yeah. I guess. Liber- uh, who was a libertarian candidate for governor last year says Invictus wants to lead a civil war is trying to recruit neo-Nazis to the party oh and God. brutally and sadistically dismembered a goat and I think the only just like I think he's just admitting to the fact that he like killed and drank a goat's blood <laughs> what? well I, I, I this guy where seems do we evil. start with this <laughs> I don't uh, this is evil <laughs> I have seen evil <laughs> Is that like one of those things? Like, well, I mean, you know, he drank he drank a goat's blood, but at least he's not a Democrat. <laughs> yeah, I want to know. The, I want to know the uh, mentality of the people who like really, really want this guy in office. Uh, oh my god. he doesn't take it from goats. Oh, oh my god, his name. He actually changed his. He actually changed his name to that. So he. That, wow, that sounds... Alright, okay, well... Let's, that let's... sounds like someone that would, like, follow you in the Da Vinci Code, honestly. <laughs> Augustus Sol Invictus. Invictus, well, Invictus has something to do with Mandela, correct? Uh, I... Yeah, well, that... Otherwise, they wouldn't have named the movie that, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I've always felt like that, uh, psychopaths I always... I thought was about soccer. Well, something about Invictus. I mean, I don't know, but whatever. If know. it was from Mandela, which I don't, like, necessarily think is... Which I, I wouldn't put it past them because a lot of evil people think they're really, really good. Right, okay, so it was the inspiring true story of how Nelson Mandela <laughs> joined... Okay, so it was it was Nelson Mandela, so why am I thinking... Why am I thinking soccer? Oh. Uh, first uh, term in the South, uh, South African president initiates a unique venture to unite the apartheid-torn land, enlist the national rugby team on a mission to win the 1995 Rugby World Cup. So we were both right, in a way. Okay. Well, I, I just think... That must like... have been a very confusing movie. <laughs> Nelson Mand- It's a sport movie, and it's a doc. Biopic. <laughs> all, in, all you need to do is just throw in a zany animated <laughs> character, and you got something for the kids. That's Nelson's... That's Nelson Mandela's sidekick. <laughs> it's okay. Larry the Leopard! I'll get you out. <laughs> uh, I sacrifice. Oh, so he said his official statement is: "I did sacrifice a goat. I know that's probably a quibble in the mind of most Americans. I sacrificed an animal to the god of the wilderness, and yes, I drank the goat's blood. God of the wilderness. <laughs> can can are there goats in the Mojave Desert? Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> clearly." <laughs> No, you can't pull. You can't pull the wool over the uh, god of the wilderness eyes. <laughs> That's a goat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I also okay. Do you know anything about Infowars? Uh, slightly. Why? Because I just love to see Alex Jones in this type of situation. <laughs> okay. I don't know if you know who Alex Jones is, but if you do, just look him up. He's a riot. He's just like he. Th- he's when I think of when I think of like the psychopath libertarian. I'll send you a link, maybe. He's just out of his mind. Yeah, please do. Um, please do. We can uh, we can jump back to that, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he renounced his citizenship in one paper. <laughs> Wait, what? What? Just... Oh, he... oh, he renounced. I thought he said denounced. Okay. Uh, he renounced his citizenship in one paper, and in another, he prophesied a great war, <laughs> saying he would wander into the wilderness and return bearing revolution. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> I want to know the doctrine that, like, says, okay, you know what, you want to lead the people, please, just do this. There's no other way. Don't try and appeal to their sense of right and wrong. Don't Kill a goat! Up. Don't make <laughs> <laughs> Don't just kill me. I imagine it's just like there's, like, there's a council meeting, just kind of like, no, no, don't, don't, don't be, don't be logical on the issues, don't, don't tell them there be, <laughs> there's one guy just, like, screaming, just kill the goat! Kill a goat! 
<laughs> uh, calm and, down, Fred. We're wait. not doing that. No, you gotta do it! No! No one Bernie ever lets me kill a goat anymore! Bernie Sanders. <laughs> there is no justice in America! Where goats Almost are brutally kill the goat. <laughs> where I, There is no justice in America without a sacrifice of a goat and the consumption of its blood. We will go down the Wall Street, and I promise you, we will, I will sacrifice slit a... a goat on their steps. <laughs> we will slit the... Wall Street is doused with blood. Goat I'm blood. Going... <laughs> Arm your straws. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh. god I love Bernie Sanders and everything But I want that to happen so fucking bad Find these goats <laughs> No it's, it's like It's it's uh, Exodus like, Wipe the goat's blood on your doorstep So your firstborn isn't killed by Bernie Sanders <laughs> <laughs> Alright that house is good that, I'm coming in there! He gets, like, all the community organizers that have been donating to his campaign. <laughs> like, have, you, have, have, you masked your, have you masked your house in the goat blood yet? No, no, why, what, no, we're voting for Trump. Oh, God! Oh, God! He's coming! He's, he, he's here! And he descends down like the like oh. a prince of Egypt, like the cloud, like the mist coming through, and he's just walking through slowly. <laughs> he comes... There is no justice when you're in America. <sighs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, if someone could please edit that into the Prince of Egypt. I would Bernie love... Sanders <laughs> is the eighth plague. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can just imagine I could just imagine just going <laughs> There's like more plagues after that, and just kind of like the the Pharaoh will harden his heart and everything, and Moses comes to him just like, "Will you let us go?" Just like, "No, you already killed my son." No, just I don't care what more you have. Like, okay, there's something really bad coming, <laughs> and what what could be worse than that? <sighs> <laughs> I gotta think. Free something. college. <laughs> Demilitarize the. Demilitarize the pharaohs. Tax the one percent, <laughs> which is you. <laughs> Your time has come, Pharaoh. It is not just when the pyramid builders, when the people who make the pyramids. <laughs> I can't even think. Dude, of you know what? Just I'm running screw, out of stuff to riff on. <laughs> you know, screw, screw him being the plague. I want to see him as Moses. <laughs> 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 Let my Rems Jews go! My he son my son Ramses and our son Bernie Sanders. <laughs> and he doesn't age. He doesn't age. He's just perpetually that 70 plus year old man the entire story. Bernie <laughs> Bernie, go. I give you ten commandments. One <laughs> Thou shalt not have college that is not free to the public. <laughs> no, no, he gets the original Ten Commandments. Just kind of like, oh, I mean, what about what about healthcare? What what are we gonna do about healthcare? <laughs> oh, well, that's kind of free. <laughs> <laughs> like God is talking, just kind of like, okay, j okay, dude, just calm down. Just we'll start here. We'll start here. It's going to be a broken system, you know that. <laughs> you understand that? No, he's getting to a fight with God, like. <laughs> thou sh thou like it's, thou shall not com thou shall well, not if, commit. What if, what if God was like secretly on the conservative party? Like we need to tax the one percent in these commandments, and God's like, no, they are job creators. <laughs> <laughs> no, Bernie, thou shall not tax thy one percent for thy open factories for thy son and thy son. It is not just when the one percenters are not taxed for their collection. I can't. I, when the, when the Egyptian people are literally enslaved, <laughs> enslaved <laughs> Jews are making pyramids, but can't even live in the pyramids they make. <laughs> oh my God! Occupy Osiris. <laughs> <laughs> Someone please make this happen. Someone please make this happen. <laughs> I think I might. Ex Exodus, the Sanders of each, the Prince of each. 
the with, no, just the Sanders of Egypt. <laughs> and there he is with his like confused face, just his, over his hair, Moses. His hair a mess. <laughs> oh God! You know what? Honestly, uh, did you see? Did you see the Emmys? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I think I think Andy Samberg like literally nailed the head, uh, hit the nail on the head. He's like, does it just me or does Bernie Sanders always look like his flight's been delayed? No, you know what he looks. You know what he reminds me a lot of. He what? reminds me of okay in the Harry Potter movies after the first Dumbledore died, and the new Dumbledore would have these like kind of commission fits. Like oh, yeah. Harry, just, Harry, just put your name in the top of the fire. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you've seen that picture where it's like it's comparing. How he said it in the book versus how he did it in the movie. <laughs> Harry, did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire? <laughs> and then, like, in the movie, Harry, did you not put your name in the Goblet of Fire? <laughs> Froze him against the wall. The shot's great because it looks like he's, like, gonna punch him in the face. <laughs> it looks like he's just going to, like, just throw him outside the <laughs> And he does, like, 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 he does, like, toss him against a wall. He does. <laughs> pretty friggin' forceful about that. Wait. America, did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire? <laughs> Wait, hold on. I had a Facebook stats, but I gotta find it, because it was really funny. <laughs> no, well, first of all... He's Please, old. can we recast Bernie Sanders in every in every elder role <laughs> in the past ten years? Wait, wait what, who else could he be? Um, he could do Mr. Megorium's Wonder Emporium. <laughs> <laughs> can you just imagine, just like, have like a whole socialist toy shop for the kids? <laughs> oh, this uh. is the... Wait, how come the Legos with one the Legos with a hundred bricks? <laughs> Alright, that's a that's a really layered joke. I apologize. Alright, hold yeah. on. I'm trying to find uh the, the status I made about it, because it was really funny. Um <laughs> Oh god, what else? Like we can uh, there's already Harry Potter. Oh he could be Gandalf. Uh, he could be Gandalf and he would be damn good at it too. <laughs> Hobbits. But we do We do need the uh the monster in the first Lord of the Rings movie. We need that to like Tr- scream. <laughs> we need that. No, that needs to be Trump. And there he just kind of like he's staring up at them with a sword and the staff, and just like you shall not. Pass. You shall not have unregulated markets in this economy. <laughs> you will not pass this budget against Planned Parenthood. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, I, I think I got it. Um. Oh, no, that's cool. That's I'm having a friggin' right, okay. blast with this. Okay, uh, here it, here it Feel is. The burn, Listen, people. Emerson kids, I know a lot of you consider him to be your lord and savior, and I agree with a lot of his politics. But a minute, Bernie Sanders is comedy gold. He's always screaming, old enough to have witnessed the Lincoln versus Douglas debates, and looks, <laughs> and looks like he'll punch you in the face if you sneak up behind him too quickly. <laughs> Oh god, there was actually there was actually a uh, wait. Oh, okay, okay, here it is. Uh, a- and he yeah, reminds yeah. me of Michael Gavin's Dumbledore. America, did you put your name in the goblet of struggle economical class divisions brought on by a late capitalistic markets and banking systems? <laughs> oh god, I can. Uh, okay, well, 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 yeah, there was a uh, uh, O'Reilly factor. I think uh, there was like a clip where they try to do a surprise interview with Bernie Sanders. He was like walking out of a uh, a speech that he was giving, and it was literally just this reporter like pestering him, just kind of like, "Well, D- Trump says you're going to take away his house. You go- O'Reilly says you're going to take away his house. You're going to do that." He's like not answering the questions. The reporter is getting all up in his face, and I swear to God, he like he said he he like don't <laughs> touch me. Like he said it in either a way that is either like you're I'll give you my money, just stop <laughs> harassing me, or I'm going to punch <laughs> you in the face. It was, like, so full of anger and fear. I'm like, oh, God. God. Wow, I actually feel kind of sorry he, for Bernie. He, If he gets it, it's going to be so interesting to see him, like, like, at the, like, talking to other people. <laughs> if he, if, I know people, like, want to see a Sanders-Trump debate, and I know I personally would love that, simply because they oh, are yeah. polar opposites. It, this, Trump embodies everything that Sanders is fighting <laughs> it, it, against. It, it, so anything that Trump says, Sanders would be like, "Why are you <laughs> listening to him? This guy's an enemy." And like Donald would be like, "This this guy, he's a well, okay, Donald." Tr- well, this this guy, Donald here, Trump is no, Donald no, Trump has been such a horrible like. I don't think the guy knows anything. Not not only like you know the whole, not only do you have the whole um. Uh, you have the fact that he. 
is, you know, against immigration, is a racist, uh, is misogynist, all that. When he is talking about politi- politics, he doesn't, he, sh- this is like, okay, we get, uh, I, Mr. Trump, what are you gonna do about, um, uh, the American dream? The American dream, it's, it's, um, that's a good question about the American dream. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do about the American dream. I, I, I've seen that, I've seen that image as well. Uh, he just kind of like sidesteps the entire thing. And then he ends up with those like, look at this hat, it's a beautiful hat. Well, no, I know like a Trump versus Sanders would be kind of crazy because it really is like Voldemort versus Harry. But then again, here's the thing. <laughs> We would risk Trump in the presidency, and we would. I, and that is a gamble I can't take. I, I rather, I would much rather have Sanders go against at least Bush or Carson, who, yeah, I don't like, but at least are human. <laughs> 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 rather than this, th- rather than this shapeless mass that appears exactly. before us, I, I just, I can't believe. People, oh God! I, I'm just, yeah. I, I, anybody who like, I know, I'm floored. I'm floored by it too. I've actually seen people with like bumper stickers and like little hats in the office, just kind of like you know, make America great again. And I can't help but roll my eyes a bit. Like, uh, that, that's just me talking as a Democrat. I know. I know there are people that genuinely support him, like the fact that he speaks what's on his mind, and I guess maybe he has a plan for America. At least he well, has something. Like, I don't know. I, I I honestly think like the fact that people support him says a lot of bad stuff about the country because the stuff he says is just... Well, my opinion has been like marred permanently by the fact that I watched the... Uh, documentary about him that he didn't want released but they did it earlier this year and it's like it details all of his business exploits and frames them in such a way where yeah it's Uh true like he did have a lot of these bankruptcies but hmm. yeah well Well, uh, i lost you for like a second um oh i'm I'm sorry about that okay but yeah yeah it, it frames it frames a lot of the stuff like okay um he was terrible to the workers, he did a lot of good things, and he had a lot of successful business ventures, but he really weaseled his way out of it. Like, crap. He's currently fighting something in Scotland because, uh, there's... Oh, actually, we could bring up that story. Uh, he's fighting, uh, a, uh, wind development overseas because it blocks his, uh... It would block the view from one of his properties. <laughs> okay. Sure. And like that, yeah, it's a Scotland, it's a golf course in Scotland. Let's see here. Uh, well, with, it, with him, it's it's just the fact that I, I think he's just so, it's the fact that people support him is what blows my mind. It's the fact that he, the people like how he says what's on his mind. Well, he has horrible things on his mind. Yeah, there is that. The word, uh, I, I, at the see. point where like I saw, I kind of like stopped thinking he was funny was, um. When he said he'll he'll send the Syrian refugees back. Yeah, that's I, I that's not a that's not a mature stance to have. Like, yes, you can talk about how bad it, how we shouldn't do it or how uh, it's a very complicated issue, but you don't just say we're we're gonna send you back. Yeah, like he's 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 now like he's now like um, what do you call it? He's now uh uh elevated to cartoon villain. <laughs> I'm gonna send him back! He really cool. has. Yeah, here we are. Uh, Donald Trump's fight against a Scottish wind farm went to UK Supreme Court on Thursday, and this was from October 8th, so yes, this does fall within the purview of the show. Uh, the latest stage in the campaign by US developer and presidential candidate to keep turbines out of his view of his Aberdeenshire golf course. They're gonna screw so. my coal. You know, you got those winds going on, there's the winds and the blowing. How can you get a good, good stroke? It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna bring that up from a par three to a par <laughs> exactly. four. <laughs> and that's not good for I'm business. I'm a businessman, you know. America's a business. <laughs> oh God, we really can't do a Trump and pre- there, there's no way to do that without at least pursing your lips. Daniel like Trump. Five hours yeah, I can't do Trump. I can only, I can do Bernie. But um, well, yeah, I uh, Bernie. <laughs> yes, and you have perfected. Thank that. you. <laughs> 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 All right, let's uh, let's go on to the last article and then uh, we can riff it some more. Okay, all right. So yes, okay, please. the final article we have is demolish this thirty pound burrito in one hour and you'll become part owner of a restaurant. All right, I just for the audience list. That sounds like a challenge. I am <laughs> for the audience to do. listening. Uh, Amy, uh, Dean and I live in Ronkonkoma, and there's a place called J and R Steakhouse. Have you ever been there? 
Jake, Jane yes, Arms Steakhouse has something similar to this. There's, like, the challenge, you eat the steak, in, like, an hour, you get, like, a free meal. It's, like, what? what is it, like, a... It's not... It's... I'm, it's not 72 ounces. I, I'm not sure. I haven't been there in a while. I think... I'm pretty sure it's 72 ounces. Which would translate to... How much How much is that in, like, regular I'm pounds? I'm not sure, actually. Let's see. Hold on. Uh, 72 divided by 16 ounces in a pound. That is four and a half pounds of steak. Oh, God. Although it might it might be it might be larger than that. Yeah. Now that I and think so, about it, so you know if you do win the challenge, you you get like a free um a free. M- you get to your yeah your meal is paid for basically. Yeah, and you and you uh, get a but... picture in the Hall of Fame. Now you can be a co-owner of a West- restaurant if you win this challenge. But that's like that's thirty pounds of burrito. Like uh, for for reference, I am like about two hundred pounds. Uh, if I ate that burrito, <laughs> I would literally become one eighth burrito. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. Oh oh, I thought it was thirty ounces. I didn't realize it was thirty pounds. <laughs> that is oh thirty pounds God. of like a thirty. No, a thirty ounce thirty ounce anything is that's doable. A... 30 ounce anything. That's a pig. Yeah. That's the size of a pig. That's the size of a small... Di- that is like a one-year-old a one or a two-year-old. Either way, that is eating a <laughs> you child. You ate a child. Here's half of the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 76 ounce steak. So that's... Yeah, that, I think that's a little okay, short of yeah. five pounds. <laughs> so six of those... So, so five six pounds of, those, of steak, though. So six of those um, steaks... Yeah, and you know what? I've seen, I've seen eating, ch- I've seen like restaurant rescue shows where it's like, okay, well, we have this giant chicken sandwich, and it's like ten pounds worth of chicken. So thirty pounds of burrito. That's a lot of fucking burrito. It sure is. <laughs> Let's see here, but a new uh, Don Chingon, a new t- uh, taqueria in Brooklyn. There's a bigger prize in store for Begluttony Chance. We'll give, we'll just give you the wall. Uh, anyone who thinks they can finish off a 30 pound Grand Chingon burrito is willing to shell out and is willing to shell out $150 for the privilege even if they don't will instantly become a 10% owner of the restaurant hmm and I hope I hope it's one of those people that don't know uh, how to do math because if for some reason you get 10 people to eat that burrito (laughs) he gets nothing out of the restaurant no one can eat it's sort of like I didn't. Th- I didn't actually think anyone would actually do it. Are you kidding me? Drink a ghost pepper margarita. Wow. I mean, wait is that is that actually well, yeah, a thing here? Oh, okay. According to the rules provided to food and wine, entrants must pay one hundred fifty dollars to enter, eat a thirty pound burrito, drink a ghost pepper margarita, and finish both of these in one no hour bathroom or less. Breaks. Touching. No bathroom breaks or discharge any, but which which is incredible. There is no way you can hold thirty pounds of anything without exploding. <laughs> that that's Mr. Creosol shit right there. Like that. Uh, wait, what was that from? Freddy? I, th- I think they did. That was uh, no. That was uh, that was from uh, that was from uh, Monty Python. Meaning, <laughs> I never seen that one. I. Uh... Oh, you! It's a great sketch. It's literally just this huge, this like thousand pound guy waddling into the restaurant. He's like throwing up after everything. You're just going like, oh, I have everything on the menu, and he eats everything. And literally, the last thing is like, and for dessert, a wafer thin mint. He eats it and he explodes. Oh, that's great. Yep. Oh God, uh, I r- really though like. <laughs> And our, oh, let, let's let's just be realistic about this. That is two pounds of burrito you must eat every minute. And I don't know when you would have time to down a ghost pepper margarita. Well, I, is a ghost pepper? I, I don't drink, so is a ghost pepper margarita like a difficult drink to? Well, a margarita, a margarita itself is tasty, but ghost peppers are notoriously one of the spiciest things on the planet. That is like, if, if you've ever seen a video of anyone eating a ghost pepper, they they hallucinate. They like go crazy. Like there was a, there was a, a video of uh, Rhett and Link's uh, Good Mythical Morning. They both ate a ghost pepper, and one of them thought he was like a spirit, <laughs> like he was taking a spiritual like, journey, like the, that episode of The Simpsons with uh, the chili. 
Yes, exactly. No, it's exactly that. It is literally exactly that. <laughs> and he's like drinking the candle <laughs> wax. <laughs> More chili. <laughs> So I did, so I I don't know like I I would definitely try a ghost pepper margarita <laughs> itself just to say that I have consumed a ghost pepper and an alcoholic drink that shouldn't be there. <laughs> but I think I'll skip on the thirty pound burrito, despite how desperate it might, people might be for restaurant ownership. Well, you want to know something Holy cool? Uh, I only got into burritos this year of my life. Yeah, uh, really? let me explain. So Emerson, in my senior year, they opened up a uh, taqueria in uh, the the um in the grill section, and I used to only have ta- I never had a burrito before. I just I, I didn't see the appeal and whatever. Um, and I started having burritos, and I really really liked them. I thought they were really yum. They are delicious they were del- food tubes. Exactly, they really and are. it also got me into quesadillas, which I also really like. Okay. Quesadillas are like, they're delicious. Well, yeah. The thing is that, I mean, with me, I wouldn't have, I would uh, get, I would have, um, usually, I wouldn't, I'm not a big spice guy. I don't like sauces at all. So usually just kind of like chicken with some, you know, the, whatever they cook it in with some cheese and lettuce. And that's like a burrito for me. But, uh, yeah, it's very good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one, one last thing, one last thing. Um, so the uh, tortilla, the tortilla for this apparently measures three and a half feet in diameter. So uh, I, if you can imagine like three and a half feet spun <laughs> around to make a giant tortilla and fill that with chicken, steak, carnitas, chorizo, cheese, rice, beans, salsa, all that good stuff. Oh my god. I can't even imagine how big that, that would be like, that would be I the size of my find torso. It. Um, 30. Oh my god. I yeah. Uh, let's see, Don Chingon. Let's see. Here. Thirty pound burrito. Why did I? What? That... <laughs> this is one of those. Uh, this was one of those things. Like I, I was not watching where I was typing, and I somehow typed in Don <laughs> Gringo. Wait, this can't. I'm the, not sure. The guy how. with the picture. There's a, there's a picture of the guy with the burrito. That can't be it. I mean, that's. Can That's really how that doesn't look heavy at all, though. It doesn't. It real, but I guess if that's if that's thirty pounds of burrito, huh? That can't be right. I mean, this is coming from the perspective of someone that I just had the quesarito yesterday. Oh, actually, <laughs> if you if you just got into burritos and you also like quesadillas, <laughs> boy, does Taco Bell have something for you? Yeah. Oh god though. Yeah, I used to never really like Mexican food, but I uh, I started getting into it. Um Yeah, it depends on where you go. There's there's always like a there's always a a place that people know that isn't Taco Bell. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I, I was the one that the one the one like kind of cuisine that I never really appealed to me was Italian food. Yeah, I'm not I'm not Really? God, you, you I really don't like first. Italian food. Like I, when I go to Olive Garden, I get plain spaghetti with meatballs. Well, that's that's half the problem. Of Olive Garden. <laughs> well, their their breadsticks are delicious. <laughs> you know, uh, I I heard it I heard it uh, said somewhere that since Olive Garden offers unlimited breadsticks, we could feed the world. I'll <laughs> <laughs> uh, flagellate yeah, uh, myself for that later. All right, I do love Chinese food. I was like, whatever. Everybody likes Chinese food. Um. My my thing with Chinese food is I always want to get something different because I feel like I, I, there's there's such a wide range well, of me, stuff I there. Well, I always you know? get this. It's funny. I always get the same thing. I always get boiled rice and boneless spare ribs, and it's probably like the best. Okay. And I've had other stuff like I've had like the bur- uh, bourbon chicken, orange chi- orange chicken. I always get thinking I'm gonna like it, and I never do. Yeah, I I felt the same way about uh, the kung pao chicken or General Sauce. And I'm like, hmm, this is, uh, they say it's spicy. I'm like, oh, this is just yeah. sticky. Yeah. Or the, uh, yeah. I do love, but, um, uh, <clears throat> have you ever been to that buffet? <laughs> Audience, again, Long Island terms. Um, you ever been to the buff, the Chinese buffet, uh, on Lakeland by, uh, Checkers and... You, you yes, mean the, the Crystal Garden one? 
Yeah, uh, I actually I actually remember thinking the other day like there uh, uh, it's really convenient that there's only like the one uh there's only the one Chinese buffet in like that area, but there can be like seven different Chinese yeah, that's places, true. That's you know? True, yeah. I, I I mean I've also had um because you really really have to like Chinese food to like consider going to a buffet. Oh, well, of that. I do. I really do like Chinese food quite a lot. Um, uh, <laughs> th- yeah, Italian food never got it to me. I, I've also um, I do like um, oh what well, we went to a I think we went to a Japanese place in Emerson like a um, was it what was it? Shwar- I think it was shawarma actually. Um and oh, I love shawarma. Love me some shawarma. Yeah, what is sh- what is shawarma exactly? <laughs> it's shawarma is a state <laughs> of mind, man. But <laughs> no, nah, well, well, for shawarma for me, it's usually like uh, kebabs. Okay. It's like the the shaven lamb meat and like the gyros and all that stuff. But they also have like some like they also have like some American influence okay. in there, I guess. Because I've had I've had kebabs and fries at a shawarma place before. Gotcha. And it's, it's, like, I have to convince people to try lamb, and they're like, oh, this is actually not My that family bad. Like, had... right? We've only been eating, like, three animals this entire time. This is yeah, a whole lamb new world is, for them. Um, I mean, I, I, my family has had lamb in the past. I won't eat a duck. I will never eat a duck, as you could probably... You you know me. <laughs> yes, I, yeah, I can I imagine. Duck. Um, I You know, we have turkey, chicken, cow, pig. Lamb, I don't know, lamb, the fact that it's a baby kind of, like, gets me a little, uh... I will never eat veal. Veal, they're tortured. <laughs> they're literally tortured. They can't move. To... It is. It is. And yet, that's that's kind of like one of those, like... It's one of those uh, established things in Italian cuisine, so... Yeah. Like, they they have, like, the they have like the, the veal chops. They have uh, veal in the meatballs. Oh, really? Well, well, some do. Some do. Like, I think it's usually just beef... But if you've ever seen, if you've ever gone to a supermarket and they have like a meatball mix, it's like there's beef, pork, and veal, and it does taste it does taste good. But you do get like that sense of cruelty afterwards. Much like if you've ever had, uh, have you ever met someone who had something called foie gras? No. That is fattened goose liver, and they get it through like some very oh, cruel yeah. means. So like on the scale of cruelness, like. If, if like, regular, if, like, the regular animal cruelty that, like, provides the food is, like, a two on that scale, and veal is a three, foie gras is, like, up there. It's, like, the whole hardness yeah, scale with folk, a diet. I, I, I think I've actually, the more you talk about it, I think I've heard about it. Um, I've also, uh, I, I did have deer one time, and that was really good. Um, yeah, I've, I've yet to have deer. I mean, I'm surprised. that's the thing about deer is, like, it's kind of like, I have, okay. I don't want to offend anybody, but I have a really kind of animosity towards hunting. Um, I, okay. I, not, I understand, like, hunting for food, and I understand if you have to, and I understand, like, the need when it comes to, like, population control, keeping the ecosystem in line. I understand. Uh, Ricky, Ricky, we're not, we're not advocating, like, lion yeah, no, yeah, no, 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 that's fine. what I'm talking about. I hate, like, big game hunting, like, gets me, like, oh, don't get me started on that. But, uh, deer, it was, it was pretty good. And, like, I can understand, um, I was in the, it was, uh, my aunt's house. She has a, she has a summer house upstate. And, um, we went there for the 4th of July and a few friends were there and we had, uh, some deer. <laughs> we, we ate a deer. <laughs> well, uh, you know what I'd like to try? I'd like to try bear. bear. Wow, bear. And then maybe Together. <laughs> <laughs> together uh, you know I just say like I'll have some bear <laughs> and deer and they'll be like why the big paws I'm like that's what I want to know bear <laughs> yep no, I'll hit myself for that later on <laughs> why do you ask the bear you murderer do Whatever. people eat bear uh, yeah no I've, I've heard people say they've had bear before and I'm like oh yeah, that's right. They are they are giant and probably have meat on them, well, right? I know yeah, people totally. have like <laughs> alligator. Yeah, well, alligator alligator I've heard tastes yeah, like chicken. Too. Probably. Yeah. Oh, speaking of speaking of this, I do have to link you to a video. There was like a there was a uh, a bad ad hoc uh, thesis. It, it, it's okay. like a convention, I guess. It, it's it's like a giant. It's it's like a whole list of presentations, and someone did a presentation of why uh, 
the taste like chicken gene is an evolutionary oh, really? advantage. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll link that to you. But uh, this has actually gotten me hungry, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna oh, go make the, me some ramen. Well, this is fun, dude. Um, all right. Yeah, we this had is fun. fun. We had rift, uh, we rift. We bit. We ate. Talk- Bernie, there is no did, justice and now I'm gonna when little cows uh, can't walk because Italians eat them in their meatballs. <laughs> you know what the real injustice here is that alligators aren't being eaten at the same frequency they're as just cows. A, they're scary. Eat <laughs> those fat cat alligators. <laughs> in wall swamp. <laughs> in their warm swamps as their children's children are free to roam around the Everglades. But cows are eaten daily. Eat an alligator. That's justice. And then sacrifice a goat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This has been Gentleman Dog Portugal, everybody. Yeah, uh, we're out. signing off. <laughs>